Let's look at some more questions from our test review. In question number seven, we're asked to find the inverse um, of this function f of x, which is a log function, and um, we're asked to include any necessary restrictions on the domain of the inverse. Now remember, when we're finding the inverse, we can think about our original function, and if it's one-to-one, -one, meaning if every x has only one y and every y has only one x, then when we find its inverse, that will also be a function. And in this case, the log function, it is one-to-one, -one, and um, so its inverse will be one-to-one -one as well. And so we don't need to do any domain restrictions. So let's get to finding the inverse. Um, I'm gonna rewrite the function switching to x and y. So x is equal to log base four of three y plus two. And we need to solve for y, oops. There's also a minus five there. All right, so we need to solve for y. First thing I'm gonna do is add that five to both sides. So I have x plus five is equal to log base four of three y plus two. So now on the right side, I've got a log expression and to undo a log expression, we're going to turn it into an exponential. The base of my exponential must match the base of my log. And the base of my log is right here, it's four. So I'm gonna make both sides exponents on four. Four to the x plus five is equal to four to the log base four of three y plus two. So now in doing that, um, the four and the log four, they undo each other. And I have four to the x plus five is equal to three y plus two. Next step, I'm going to subtract two from both sides. Three y is equal to four to the x plus five minus two. And final step, to get the y by itself, um, divide by three. And so I'll go over here, y is equal to four to the x plus five power minus two divided by three. In our next question, um, find f of x and g of x such that f of g of x is equal to h of x and h of x equals the cube root of x squared minus one plus three. All right, so this is one of those functions where we've got a composite function. Um, oh, sorry about that. Let's go back up, there we go. Um, we've got a composite function here. And basically what we're doing is decomposing that function. We're trying to figure out what is f and what is g. Now I notice in the composite function that g is the function that's on the inside. G of x is gonna be our inside function, and f of x is gonna be our outside function. F of x on the outside, g of x on the inside. So if I look at h of x, for me, I think it's easier to identify the inside function first. In this case, the function that is inside another function is the x squared minus one. x squared minus one, that's our g of x, which means that our f of x is the cube root cube root of x plus three. Question number nine, expand the following log expressions um, using our log properties. How can we rewrite these expressions using the log properties? Well, on question number one, or I'm sorry, part A here, natural log of A times B to the fifth. Whenever two things um, inside the log are being multiplied, we can rewrite that as the addition of two logs because remember that logs are exponents and whenever we are multiplying, we add our exponents. So I can rewrite this as the natural log of A plus the natural log of B to the fifth. The other thing I can do here, I've got this a power of five, and um, whenever we have an exponent to an exponent, we multiply the exponent. So that five can move to the front of the log, like this, and I end up with natural log of A plus five times the natural log of B. 
And that would be the final answer on that one. Let's go to part B. On part B, um, we have log of 5 divided by 2. And whenever you are dividing, you subtract exponents. So we're going to rewrite this as subtraction of two logs. Log of 5 minus log of 2. Part C. On part C, we've got log of 2 times B divided by 5 times A. So I've got some multiplication going on here as well as division. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to do the division first. Log of 2B minus log of 5A, because when you're dividing, you subtract exponents. And then uh, we're going to also break up this multiplication here. So log of 2 times b becomes log of 2 plus log of b. And I'm going to put that in parentheses because that all goes together. Minus, and then over here, log of 5 plus the log of a. All right, part d. Um, natural log of 4 plus a divided by the square root of a minus 4. So I've got some division here. I also have addition and subtraction. Now remember with addition and subtraction, there's nothing we can do to rewrite that. Um, if you are adding and subtracting uh, terms with exponents, the exponents do not change. And so there's nothing I can do with that, but I can rewrite the division part and also the square root. I'm going to start out by just rewriting that square root as an exponent. Remember, we've talked about how square roots can be written as a fraction exponent, a minus 4 to the 1 half power. So I've rewritten the square root. Now I'm going to split up um, the two parts of the quotient here, natural log of 4 plus a minus the natural log of a minus 4 to the 1 half. So that's using our log property for division. Our last step, I'm going to take that 1 half exponent and move it to the front of that log. And so we get natural log of 4 plus a minus 1 half times the natural log of a minus 4. Let's look at one more question on this video. Question number 10. Uh, we're being asked to solve the following equation. It's a log equation. And we're also told here to note that this is a non-calculator question. So log of 3 plus log of x minus 1 is equal to 2. So our first step here, we've got to combine these two logs together. Um, and this is kind of the reverse of what we were doing in the previous question. I've got two logs that are being added. And I know that when I'm adding exponents, um, that means I'm multiplying. So I can rewrite this as log of 3 times x minus 1 uh, still equal to 2. Uh, so now I've got a log expression on the left side. To undo the log, I'm going to turn it into an exponential. Uh, the base here, notice on my log there is no base written here, and that means we're to assume it's a base of 10. So I'm going to make both sides an exponent on 10. 10 to the log of 3 times x minus 1 equals 10 squared. All right, so the 10 and the log over here on the left, they undo each other. And 3 times x minus 1 equals 100. Um, I'm going to divide by the 3. And x minus 1 equals 100 over 3. And last step, add that 1 to both sides. And x is equal to um, 100 over 3 plus 1, um, which actually we could rewrite as 3 thirds. And that would equal 103 over 3. That's our value for x.